So welcome everybody and thank you for joining us at uh, Ice Corp Logistics today. My name is Sarah Barnes Humphrey and I am the Director of Marketing here at Ice Corp. As a fellow CITP designate, um, I'd like to welcome the CITP designates as well as Daniela from FIT to the presentation today. Um, we are going to be hearing from our Director of Customs in regards to our customs program here at Ice Corp. We're going to be hearing from myself as well as Roberta Strange on the international portion of what we do here at Ice Corp. We're going to be hearing from Ron Mazurik and he's the Director of Warehousing and Distribution and he'll be talking to you about that um, and our program here at Ice Corp. And then Al Patterson who is um, a part of our Mendelssohn and Commerce team and involved in our international trade show and events. Um, so thank you very much for coming. So good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Ron Mazurik. I'm the Director of uh, Warehousing and Distribution for Ice Corp. Um, we're going to provide you with a little bit of an overview of Ice Corp services. Uh, we're going to be covering off all the different business sectors that uh, we provide solutions and services for, for within our customer basis. And essentially, um, our customer service offerings uh, comply of customs clearance. Uh, we've got a highly innovative and knowledgeable customs team uh, with Ice Corp uh, Logistics. Uh, Ice Corp has been the uh, has been the leader in, uh, in, the, uh, in the international uh, trade business as well as customs clearance into Canada. We also provide services into the United States as well as customs compliance. Uh, we've been the innovator of international freight services for more than 20 years, uh, moving freight throughout the world. May it be international freight, air, sea, ocean, or ground transportation to or from the United States. We have an extensive network that covers uh, movement of freight throughout the world. Distribution services. Uh, we've got uh, six distribution centers right across Canada. Uh, these distribution centers offer fulfillment, pick and pack, cross docking services, and, and various added value services uh, to various customers that, uh, throughout Canada and the United States. And finally, we have our event logistics uh, side of the business, which basically focuses on uh, trade logistics uh, relative to trade shows throughout the world within Canada and the United States. Uh, these are the core competencies of Ice Corp. Uh, essentially, all of these divisions work in uniform, jointly together, in order to find one source, one solution for our customers. Uh, so in, a, in, a, in essence, we're working jointly within all business units in harmony uh, to satisfy the customer's needs from a logistics logistics perspective. And we're going to, uh, Neil Ferry is going to touch a little bit more in detail relative to our customs clearance uh, services. Good morning everyone, my name is Neil Ferry, I'm the Vice President of Customs for the Ice Corp Group. Uh, we've been, as uh, my previous colleague uh, Ron had said, we've been in the business in this uh, company for about 20 years in brokerage. Uh, what we look at in brokerage now is something from more so from the security standpoint than the actual process standpoint. The governments on both sides of the border and across the world are very security minded now. So when we are looking for employees, for example, most of the employees that we have in this company are either approved by the government as being a licensed broker or through some college or institution they have qualified to be a designate to work in customs. Uh, when we get new people into the department, we train them as well and bring them along and we usually put them through all the courses as well. We do clear for goods coming into Canada. We also clear for goods going into the U.S. through our U.S. partner. But we've just now recently through our um, events and trade show division are looking at doing customs clearance globally. We do trade shows around the world and Al will touch on that a bit later. Most of our clients are from all types of businesses. Uh, we handle freight of all kinds. However, we do specialize in the medical, uh, aerospace, and the retail markets at this point. To get into a little bit more detail, um, as I mentioned, uh, our people are very skillful at preparing the documentation. We handle millions and millions of dollars every day for our customers, so accuracy is of prime importance. Uh, one of the big things now, as I just mentioned to you, was the, uh, the security part of it. We have a division called Tracon, and what they really do is help our customers remain compliant in all aspects of the business. We do send out regular brochures and newsletters to our customers as well to keep them up to date on things that are going on in the business. And when we do bring on new business, we have a, um, a process that we follow to bring all these customers online because it is and will remain very, very complicated. And when you look at the size of most of their tariff bases, they have to be done accurately or they subject, subject themselves to audits by Canada Customs. 
And our system, we have what we think is the best system in the industry, and it does have full online, real-time tracking capability for all our customers' goods. And one of the most important things we're finding nowadays as we move forward with our clients is the ability to provide flexible, customizable management reports. They need this when they start doing their strat plans and how they're going to function as a company with the importing of goods. All right, so at Ice Corp, uh, we've played a significant role in the international arena for the last 25 years. On an annual basis, we move 2.6 million kilos of air freight in and out of Canada. We move uh, five to 10,000 full container loads in and out of Canada, as well as about 30 cubic meters of less than container load freight in and out of Canada annually. Um, to, in order to do that, we have a huge team of knowledge specialists within the industry to be able to help us to do this. We move freight from door to door, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of different parties involved in that movement, and so there are a lot of challenges that do come up. Um, a couple specifically, one was we had a, a client's container moving from Europe into the port of Montreal. And um, as, it, as the vessel came into the St. Lawrence River, the water was so low that the vessel actually moved aground and didn't actually make it to the port of Montreal. And so the container actually sat there for a couple of months until the water levels and they, uh, came up and we could move the vessel into the port of Montreal. During that time, they obviously needed to get their cargo in for inventory purposes, and we worked with our client to make sure that they were able to recoup some of their inventory and bring some additional inventory into their uh, warehouse so that they could service their clients. On another end, um, if you're moving anything by ocean freight, and you need to change the destination. So originally the destination is Toronto, and you want to change the final destination into Edmonton. Well, the, depending on um, the time that you let us know, if the cargo is already on the water, we can generally change that. But if the cargo is already about to dock into Vancouver, then there are some rules and regulations with Canada Customs that we're not al actually allowed to change the destination. It becomes more of an issue. So those are some of the challenges on a day-to-day -day basis that our team of knowledge specialists um, in our operations department has to deal with and they become problem solvers. Um, I just wanted to talk to you briefly about uh, international freight. Um, I personally have been in the industry all of my life and it's something that I'm very passionate about. Um, international freight has evolved over time. Um, from an ocean freight perspective, we've seen the transition from air freight in the last few years that has now receded um, to more of an emphasis on the ocean freight standpoint. With regards to the ocean freight, the customer needs more visibility with regards to their supply chain as we move forward into the evolving or what I call the evolution of the uh, the internet. The internet has forced everybody to be very visible with regards to supply chain allowing them to focus and want to know more about their day-to-day -day operation. Um, as far as the air freight is concerned, air freight is one of those things that has turned into more of a just-in-time. Um, because of the cost factor associated with air freight, um, air freight in particular has, it's, it's fallen off the rails uh, at this point in time in, uh, in the marketplace. However, it's, it, it's one of those critical aspects that do fall into the supply chain, but not as much as the ocean freight that we're seeing these days. Um, customer supply chain, it used to be very segmented with regards to the various modes of transportation, but we're seeing that um, because of the internet, the inter internet has forced everybody to look more into their supply chain and want more visibility into the various aspects. Therefore, it allows them to plan and drill down, whether it be from an operational perspective, allowing people then to bring in the necessary warehousing and distribution uh, manpower. Uh, so it does affect various aspects. And, and this is something that has changed and will continue to change over time. Um, with regards to the door-to-door, -door. that is another element that we're seeing. Before it used to be airport to airport or port to port. Now everybody is changing that and they're looking at the complete cycle and trying to drill down and get the best that they can as far as their supply chain is concerned. Okay, I uh, wanted to cover off some of our uh, distribution service uh, benefits and, uh, and uh, highlights of uh, what we do as far as warehousing and distribution at Ice Corp. 
Um, we've got uh, primarily facilities right across Canada. We have facilities in Vancouver, uh, we have facilities in Montreal, and of course we have facilities here in Toronto. So in other words, we've positioned our distribution centers at the main gateways uh, in order to be able to supply uh, our customers and their customers uh, with uh, fast transit times and product delivery to the end user. Um, these distribution centers work uniformly. Uh, these distribution centers work uh, through EDI technology, so in other words, any orders that come into our facilities are, are handled electronically and communication back to our clients are handled electronically as well. And I'm sort of going to walk through the process of how that happens from receiving, replenishment, to order process and delivery to the end customer. Uh, we also generate online reports for our customers. Uh, our customers have visibility uh, to uh, their inventory levels, to track and trace, to see the status of any particular order. Uh, all of that is available over the website uh, to each and every customer. The next slide, basically, with any customer that we set up, it is important in warehousing and distribution to create a database of the customer's product numbers, uh, the items that they're going to be selling in Canada or may it be in the U.S. or internationally. So what we do is we set up an extensive database of our customer's part numbers, the descriptions. Uh, we go to the level of setting up the unit of measure. May it be an individual piece that they're selling? May it be a pack of six, a carton, or a full pallet? That's all recorded in our inventory management system on each and every SKU. Uh, which is a stock keeping unit, which is their part number. As well, we can add any particular notes on that particular item that our material handlers or our customer service representatives need to be aware of uh, when shipping that product to a customer. May it need special packaging, may, you know, if it's delicate product, it may need special bubble film wrap or special attention uh, on deliveries or notifications. Once that is in place, the next slide will outline essentially how we receive end product uh, into our warehouses. Essentially, our customer will uh, transmit a a purchase, their, a purchase order to us from their vendor. The vendor can be located uh, here in Canada, in the United States, or overseas. Uh, we, will, we have the ability to arrange the transportation from the vendor uh, to Canada, to the particular distribution center. When the product arrives at our distribution center, uh, we, do a full in, uh, we do a full inspection of the product. We verify exactly what has come in against the purchase order and the documentation. Uh, once that verification takes place, uh, we, then, uh, we then update our inventory management system where from there locations are generated for where the product needs to be placed within the warehouse. Our material handlers will then take that product, put it into its location, record that information, and then of course update our inventory system. Once that's completed, uh, the information is then electronically transmitted to our customer. So in other words, they get, a, they get a verification that the product has arrived at our distribution center, they get a verification that the product has been put away, and all inventory has been accounted for, and at this point now, they, this inventory is available uh, for picking and shipping. Uh, so essentially that's the receiving process. The next slide outlines the outbound fulfillment. Essentially what will happen is the customer will transmit orders to us uh, electronically for the most part. The reason uh, we communicate electronically is it's efficient. Uh, if customers fax us orders or email us orders that were res uh, in a manual environment that requires for us to manually enter the orders. When you manually enter orders there's always room for human error. Uh, we take away that uh, human error by transmitting information electronically between our customer system and our system. Once that order is received that order then can be relayed to the appropriate distribution center. May it be for Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, uh, whichever the inventory needs to be deplenished from. At that point, uh, our system offers the abil availability to view those orders and prioritize them if necessary. If a customer calls and says there's one particular order that they want put ahead of the batch of orders, we can prioritize that and move that towards the, uh, the floor operations. Once we receive the orders, the orders are transmitted uh, to the floor and, and of course our material handlers will go and pick and pack the product. Uh, the product can be unit picks, carton picks, or pallet picks. Uh, the, the, the picking uh, direction will, uh, will direct them to the appropriate location. Uh, 
They will go to that location, they will verify that location, they will pick the appropriate product from that location and continue on until they complete that particular order. And the next stage would be is to, at that point, once the order is picked, it goes to a staging area where the goods then are shrink wrapped or packaged in appropriate cartons. We then generate packing slips, we generate all the shipping labels that are required. Uh, we do a tremendous amount of business with major retailers such as um, HBC, Walmart, Target and so forth. Uh, when you're shipping to these large retailers, they require specific barcoding requirements. Uh, we generate those barcoding requirements on behalf of our customers. We apply those barcodes uh, to the appropriate product and then we arrange for the appointments to ship the product to the major retailers. And the next step that we also do on behalf of our customers is we transmit an electronic advanced shipping notification to the major retailer um, advising them that a purchase order has been placed, uh, it has been prepared, and it basically has an appointment is, and is going to be shipped to uh, the retailer's major distribution center. Uh, and essentially all of this takes place within our, ma our warehouse management system. Once that order is completed and on its way to the customer, we then transmit all the information back to our customer, verifying that we've picked it, we've shipped it, and uh, it's on its way to your customer. At that point, uh, our customer can then produce an invoice uh, to the major retailer. One of the areas that we've expanded on uh, as an added value is that not only, we also have the ability, which we call our special managed services, to be able to also generate commercial invoices or the invoicing on behalf of our customers. So in other words, if you're looking at a US-based company um, that's based in the United States, we're, we're housing their product here in Canada on their behalf. Uh, all they have in Canada is a sales presence to, sell, to sell and market their business. We look after all the logistics for them. We have have the ability when an order is placed, uh, along with picking the order, we have the ability to generate a commercial invoice on their behalf with their letterhead, if you may, and, and that uh, commercial invoice can go with the shipment to the customer. We can also transmit an invoice electronically to the major retailer on behalf of our customer. And the final step that we can also offer as an added value is we can look after a remittance of collection of funds from their customers here in Canada. Uh, our collection department will manage that on behalf of our customer. We will collect the funds and then we will remit it back to the U.S. entity or customer. Uh, that's an added value service that we look after our customers uh, as well. In addition to filing any uh, GST, HST registration in Canada for a U.S.-based customer, that is another area of business uh, or service that we can provide uh, to our customers. Okay. And the next slide. Essentially, what's key is we want to provide visibility to our customers. Customers want to know, essentially, uh, where their product is at all times, what's the status of the product. Uh, we do that through web portals where they can actually go into the system, they can view the transactions, they can view a status of an order, or we simply can feed them information through reporting electronic EDI in order to keep them aware of exactly what the status of their inventory is, what the status of their shipments are, in order to ensure that uh, the supply chain of their product being sold to their customers is, 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 uh, is managed uh, efficiently, accurately, and uh, in, uh, in, in, in a very fast, short time frame. Good morning, everyone. My name is Al Patterson with Mendelssohn Event Logistics. I'm about to be Mendelssohn Commerce Event Logistics. I'm the director at, at this company. We've been in business, I think the other day I found out, over 100 years uh, doing trade shows and conventions predominantly across Canada. We have offices in Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, and Calgary. We do approximately 1,000 trade shows and conventions a year. Uh, we liaison with meeting planners that plan these meetings in Canada. We liaison between customs and the customers and our exhibitors. So we handle both transportation and customs for all the exhibit components coming into Canada. Another uh, avenue we do business with is internationally. So we will do business, whether we handle a show here in Canada, we can actually handle the logistics aspect overseas in Europe. We can do the transportation, freight forwarding, material handling, any air and ground, um, we're, we're on site taking care of that event from the move in to the move out. So what happens at these trade shows is normally the move in takes about 24 to 48 hours to move a particular trade show into the country, no matter whether it be in Canada or overseas. So our team, we have a staff of 22, depending on where the event is throughout the world, they will service that event. They will be there before the move in for our clients and the exhibitors and they'll be there after the move out. So we've been doing this for over 100 years, like I said. 
and our we have official properties. So we are official at the Metro Toronto Convention Centre in downtown Toronto. We're the official customs and transportation provider for the Fairmont Royal York in Toronto. We're the official customs broker for the Sheridan Centre in Toronto. So we do, I think last year we did about 975 events. So whether it be a small meeting where there's executives at a particular hotel, or it's a large convention at a, a trade show at a particular facility, whether it be here in Canada or overseas, we can handle all that. We'll take that burden right off the meeting planner's shoulders. To answer your question, um, with regards to tracking and tracing uh, from an international perspective, what we do is we generally try to get everybody set up from a PO standpoint and then you're able to track the PO through our system and through our agents, whether it be um, at point of origin or at destination. And it's through that that you get visibility. That's not to say that um, in some areas of the world, tracking is a challenge. That's all part of the freight forwarding process. However, we have to, again, freight forwarding and the supply chain is dependent on a variety of partners working together to make it work, all right? Um, but when you have, when you operate from the front end, the purchase order, you get visibility and everybody is providing the data which then allows you to know what's going on at every step of the way. So it, it's a consortium that makes it work with regards to your supply chain. Um, now, with reference to those challenging areas where you'd mentioned uh, possibly putting in a chip, uh, I believe that's more on a pharmaceutical level. Um, there's new technology coming out every day uh, to overcome the logistic nightmares in certain areas, whether it be in West Africa, whether it be in Russia. I mean, these are areas that are probably always going to be a challenge. Um, but with it, technology is changing and you will see it evolve over time. And that's something that we in the industry ourselves has seen just with going back to what I mentioned earlier with the internet, how the internet has driven everybody to change and allow further visibility. So I think, you know, even with the, the most difficult areas of the world, I do believe in due course, you're gonna see a change and we will have visibility to that final customer. Over the course of the years, we've been able to reduce a lot of the manual work that we've done by, um, you know, making it available on the internet. You're able to track your shipments. We are able, as a company, to be able to track, you know, the container on rail. We're able to, and instead of calling and making that phone call and speaking to somebody on the other line to find out where it is, and sometimes that's a long process because it takes a couple of hours if they're not at their desk, they have to call you back. And, and I think the information flow has been streamlined and it's a lot easier to get information and be able to provide our customers with that information. From the warehousing perspective, um, uh, technology has, 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 has advanced significantly. In the early days of warehousing, um, when a customer placed an order, they would fax you an order. Um, you've got sheets and sheets of, uh, of orders that you need to manually enter into your warehouse management system. You print your pick tickets. That has to go out to the warehouse. The warehouse then goes and picks the product. Uh, in that method, it's very manual. Um, uh, pick tickets, paper get lost in the warehouse. You have people driving around forklifts. They can blow off, get lost. Now you have shortages, orders not being delivered on time to customers. Where technology has, has significantly improved uh, the, uh, is where customers now have the ability to transmit their orders electronically to us. So where it could take four hours for a customer service person to enter an order into a warehouse management system is done instantaneously. You have visibility of those orders. You can direct those orders to the floor appropriately. Uh, even at the floor level, technology has expanded to uh, radio frequency, where instead of having a, a paper uh, pick ticket, you now have a handheld scanner that basically directs the material handler to the location they need to go to. They scan that location, which verifies they're at the right location. Then they can actually take the product and actually scan the UPC of the product, verifying that you're picking the correct product. Versus in the old days, it's all 
by paper and, and matching it up. So you're taking away the uh, you're taking away the human error factor. Uh, you're speeding up the process uh, and making it that much more efficient. Really Actually, what he was about. talking about, uh, like uh, scanning a product and you could see the active tools, which shelf location. This is one of the uh, latest now being used. Make life easier. Yeah. Even more yeah. advanced technology out there now is on the small pick and pack, it's voice recognition. So in other words, wow. without scanning, uh, you've got the headset and, uh, the he and it's a computer telling you exactly where to go and what to pick. Yeah. Oh. And there's also pick to light, which is technology where um, you know, you've got pick faces where you basically will go to the location, it lights up, you push the button, you take what you're supposed to take. Uh, you know, that technology is sort of becoming obsolete because it's, it's sort of, um, it's, it's more niche to a certain product line. But really, the RFID is, is, is the latest in technology right now. The, the uh, thing I sent you on the weekend? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But really, what technology has done is highlighted the importance of the customer service aspect moving away from the actual run work mm -hmm. of what all companies do. I mean, Ron and I were in Atlanta a while ago, and we went into the restaurant at the airport. There's no servers, there's an iPad in front of you, pick what you want, hmm. slide your card for the price, enter a tip if you want. They give you a receipt, and five minutes later, the food shows up at your table. If it's, it's wrong, very it's little, your fault. Yeah, because you picked it. Right. So what yeah. I'm saying, I guess, is Can't even yell at a waiter. from an educational <laughs> standpoint, the ability for students to interact is much more higher profile now than it was in the old days, because you spend a lot of time doing the actual paperwork. Now it's communication. Mm -hmm. That's what technology I see as that. It, it's really a tool for sorry. It's really a tool for the for the for the people. Again, we're this our business is a people business, customer service. Uh, you know, we, we provide the tools to to our to our staff uh, to help uh, make their job easier, but at the same time uh, be efficient in when processing customer orders. Uh, but it's still all about um, the the people on the floor. They're touching the freight. They're the ones that are touching the freight, picking the freight. We're providing them with tools and technologies to make that job a lot easier and more efficient for them. So I'm going to um, touch on the PO stage to the delivery stage and um, how IceCorp and our global companies are involved with that. So when a, um, a Canadian company purchases a product from, let's say, a company in Asia, they're going to send their purchase over, over to their uh, shipper. Once the shipment is ready, they will be contacting our global company over in, in that particular part of Asia. And they will also uh, make the arrangements to pick that shipment up, bring it to the port, load it into a container, or if it's a full container, load it onto the vessel. Then we will also be make, we will also book the container or the shipment with the, either the steam, with the steamship line. And from there, the steamship line ensures that the shipment gets loaded to the vessel. Um, we track the shipment from time of loading onto the vessel across the waters and once it docks into the Canadian port. Generally, generally from Asia, it docks into um, one of the ports in Vancouver, either Prince Rupert or there's a few um, ports at the port of Vancouver. Once it comes into Canada, we are updating our clients um, as to where the container is, whether it's still on the vessel, whether the vessel is docked, whether the container has been taken from the vessel and is now awaiting a rail car. Because generally to move cargo from the port of Vancouver to the port of Toronto, it's being moved by rail. So once the container is taken off the vessel, um, it's now in line to be put to rail. Once it's being put to rail, we're, we're able to see on the rail lines where that partic particular container is uh, moving forward. So we provide our clients with status updates as to if it's still in BC, if it's moving through Alberta, if it's moving through Thunder Bay, and then again once it gets here into Toronto. Once it gets into Toronto, it's pulled from the rail and put into a rail yard where it's available for pickup once the customs clearance has been done, the original bill of lading has been surrendered, and once that has been done, we schedule for pickup. We send a trucking company in to pick up the container, and then it's delivered directly to the consignee's door. Most of the goods flow freely into Canada, but it's based on a lot of preparation. 
the quality of your paperwork, uh, the quality of your database, which contains all your HS codes information, whether or not you're subject to NAFTA and things of that nature. Now, there is occasions, of course, through the targeting program and customs where importers are subject to an audit. They would get a letter from the government. Customs would come in and they would sit down and go through, really from PO to sale, how they conduct their business. The goal here is to always have your broker with you, although in the world of customs in Canada, for sure, the importer of record is always responsible. We as the broker are an agent that operate on behalf of that importer, but we're only as good as the information that we get from the customer. But we definitely support uh, any customer who is going through an audit, and that's done through our TRACON division. That's why when we're setting up an account or we get a new account, we're very thorough with how their goods flow in and out of the country. That way, in most cases, if you are subject to an audit, you're going to come out what we call clean with no potential fines or penalties. Well, we, we consider ourselves experts in the field, so we know most of the regulations that are surrounding various types of imports. If you're a meat importer or a fish importer or you import machinery, before we set you up as a customer, we obviously go to the regulations to make sure that we have that as a verification tool to know how to set you up correctly. Once we have that information, we meet with you in advance, ensure your profiles are correct, that your paperwork is correct, and things of that nature. That way, your goods should flow uninterrupted, and at the same time, if you are called for an audit, and the audit cycle is usually every five years, depending on how much duty you pay. Sometimes they look at the higher duty payers first before they look at the ones that don't. But nevertheless, every importer is subject to audit by customs, the CBSA. But if we go through that process, I can't say it will indemnify you from any penalties, but it certainly puts you in a lot better position than if you just start importing and don't do any preparatory work, for example, through our... Tracon division. Well, a, rule, a ruling, for example, is if you have an item that you can't, the classification of the product could be either or, and one might be dutiable, one might not be dutiable. Obviously, our goal is to make sure that we always have the correct classification on the goods. If we're uncertain or we think the best way to go might be to get a ruling, we will write to Canada Customs on your behalf to obtain a ruling. So what that means is anywhere you import those goods across Canada, that ruling and the content of that ruling would apply to the importation of those goods. What we advise an importer as well is if you decide not to go for a ruling and we classify it, for example, what we think is correct and what the importer thinks is correct could be, for example, be duty free. Customs might come back and say, no, we think it's classified under this item and it might be 5%. So what would happen is you are, need to clarify with customs exactly where that goes, but you could end up paying back duties if customs happens to be right. So it can go as high as the tariff board. We like to do this up front, and if we think a ruling is necessary, we will apply for it because that allows us to make sure that your goods are 100% accurate in accordance with the rules. Well, two, two to three months, depending on complexity. If it's a complicated uh, food product that has a lot of different chemicals and things in it, it'll probably go to the lab in Ottawa. It could be longer as well. But through our TRACON division, we have um, um, contested uh, issues with customs, which we have every right to do, and have gone right up to the tariff board to do that. Some of them are favorable. Some of them are not always favorable. The goal really is to make sure it's done correctly, accurately with the right rate of duty applied if there is duty to be applied. We are experts in Canada and we have some knowledge in the U.S. but we have a, a U.S. partner that we use right across the board. So we rely on them because the rules, although they're similar, are different. They've changed in every country. Europe, again, is different as well. So we need to work with the agents that are located in that country to make sure that we have their expertise. It's just that on the customer side, it's sort of seamless because they're, doing, they're dealing with you here. They don't see all the different Correct. things. Correct. Okay. Correct. It's done behind the scenes. Um, it's generally the same process um, from most of the countries. Where it differs is um, pickup and the rules and regulation at their end. 
um, after the goods are picked up and before they're actually sent over to Canada. Um, and then the same on the export side. Um, some countries have a bit of a monopoly when it comes to their trucking companies. So deliveries, uh, for us to arrange for delivery in that country isn't always favorable, uh, depending on what country we're, that we're dealing with, um, as well as customs in that country. A lot of the time we'll help um, our clients with inco terms and let them know, especially on the export side, that they may want to just pay until port and then let their client take it from there, depending on what country that they're dealing with.